Good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day. You're welcome. Now, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but there seems to be something afoot aside from Mother's Day. We have some visitors from the West, sort of sitting back here. Bringeth the microphone, yes. Tell us, tell us who you are and from where you hail. Oh, there you go. Yep, yeah, we're working now. Hello. Uh, yes, there you go. Uh, Jim and Kristen Deneen from Hendersonville. And? <laughs> Tim and Carol Webster from Hendersonville. And keep coming, keep coming. Are y'all, you're not going to claim visitors. Are you, you, oh, there's one up here. Come on up. Come on up. Hello, I'm Karen Todak, um, Mary Schilling's oldest daughter. Well, welcome. She broke her wrist, so I'm helping her. Thank you. Good morning. Matt Olin from Northern Virginia here with Mom and Norton for Mother's Day. Well, we're glad you are here. They're everywhere. <laughs> this is Lisa from Crossville. <laughs> well, hello, Lisa. Hey, we, we, we don't discriminate. You can be visiting from Crossville. Okay, now for, for one brief shining moment yesterday, we had a clean board in the office. Everybody was home, but now Mr. Norton will be having a procedure. So Mr. Norton will be on the board. We will be meeting you tomorrow morning at the hospital. And then we will promptly take you off of the board so everybody else stay home. You're doing very well. And I have been asked to remind you, next Saturday and Sunday, so don't get smart and think you can avoid it by coming on Saturday, we'll be having a fire drill. Not just any fire drill, this is just like when you were in school, you got to go all the way outside. And we're going to rally around the sign that says... There you go. There's a great big sign out there that says assembly. That's us. So next Saturday and Sunday, fire drill. Uh, We are brunching after. Boy, you just look so nice with your flowers. That's kind of like I feel like I'm getting ready to lead worship at the prom or something. That's really (laughs) nice. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. And no blood, right? Nobody was... Be good. Okay, very good. Other, uh, do we have announcements from the body, something of which we need to be made aware? Yes, sir. Uh, just a reminder, next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday. Yeah, 9 a.m., we're going to do a work day. Oh, next Saturday? Yeah. Oh, very good. And for those of you, I'm glad you popped up. For those of you playing the home edition, the uh, sacristy sink that we think has been leaking since Moses was a small child has now been fixed thanks to our property group so wait yeah you it's only been what three years or something so we got it now once you finally tell them boy you turn in that work order stuff happens okay anything from the music department are we good who what Baby bottles, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, Baby bottles are out there. There was some confusion (laughs) when we told people to fill the baby bottles. We don't want formula, we don't want milk. We're after money. (laughs) So take take a baby bottle home, bring it back. What do we say, bring it back before Father's Day? Okay, so uh, you can bring it back sooner if you would like and take another one home, but yes, thank you. 
If there is nothing else, as you are able, I invite you please to stand for the thanksgiving for baptism which we use throughout this Easter season. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wells. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the Spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Save, comfort, 
and defend us, gracious Lord. Together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children. Give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, so that through, though indeed he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for they too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God was overlooking the times well, while God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Bless our God, you peoples, let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living, and has not allowed our feet to sin. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the land. You laid heavy burdens upon our hearts. You let 
let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I went to your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings and fatlings with a smile. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God with my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. A reading from First Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. John, the 14th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. 
This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Most all of us have a history. And many of us have a history that we would not like to have documented and studied. Yeah. So you can tell the people who laugh. They're the ones with the history. Personally, I'm exceedingly glad that I did most of my stupid things prior to the Internet. So there is not a living record stretching into infinity which my grandchildren can access for their pleasure. Many people within the church over the years have had sketchy backgrounds. None more so than St. Augustine. And by the way, this, this is a brief aside. The city in Florida is Augustine. The guy is Augustine, just so you will know. Anyway, Augustine, before there was a saint attached to his name, had, shall we say, a colorful background. Born in Roman North Africa to a devout Catholic mother and a pagan father. woo -hoo -hoo. We're off to a good start there. He was a notorious, rebellious teenager, which seems a little redundant, but anyway, there you have it. He lived with his girlfriend. They were not married. Joined an exotic Eastern cult and ran away from his saintly mother. However, Augusta became a renowned teacher of public speaking was appointed by the emperor to teach in Milan where he ran into St. Ambrose, who was the bishop of Milan. It's had quite an impact on young Augustine. He was baptized in 386. Then he renounced his secular career, put away his mistress, became a monk, then a priest, and finally bishop of Hippo. Not the large animal that lives in the water, but the city. He went on to become one of the great teachers of the church, earning the designation doctor of the church. I tell you all this riveting bit of church history for three reasons. One, I like church history, and I often don't get to run through stuff like this. Two, you are probably not as bad as you think you are, at least St. Augustine's history makes me feel better about me. And three, it's really not all that important how or where you start. What is important is where you live and how you finish. We are not left, you and I, to wallow where God finds us. We are claimed, we are gathered, and then we are brought in and sent forth. We are not left to stay where we were. In the first reading, St. Paul is trying to find an entry point to talk to the Athenians. Now, if you've never had the fun experience of trying to talk to a philosopher, it's sort of like banging your head against a wall. You don't get very far very fast. But Paul seizes on an inscription to an unknown God sort of a covering all your bases or another part of your anatomy. Within the writings of St. Augustine, there is a famous line, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. The full version is a little bit longer. Greater you, O Lord, and exceedingly worthy of praise, your power 
is immense, your wisdom beyond reckoning. And so we, who are a due part of your creation, long to praise you. We also carry our mortality with us, carry the evidence of our sin, and with it proof that you thwart the proud. You arouse us to praise you that this may bring joy. Because you have made us and draw us to yourselves, our heart is restless until we rest in you. So the thinking goes that whether we know it or not, whether we recognize it or not, that restlessness, that dis-ease, that sinking notion that something just isn't right comes from separation from God. Sin, not knowing God, not all that different from St. Paul and the smarty pants Greeks who worship an unknown God. Now, along comes Paul and says, well, you may think it's unknown, but we have come here to make it known to you. This need that you feel, this emptiness, this longing what it is that drove you to put up something to an unknown God. We're here to tell you about that God. Making known that which was formerly unknown. Making peaceful that which was restless. Making whole that which was incomplete. The notion of being Offspring of being a child flows throughout the New Testament but finds a power and prominence in the Gospel of John. What a glorious and cryptic phrase. I will not leave you orphaned. Orphaned. We are all pretty much, I believe, closing in on being in the same boat. It happened to me relatively early, lost both parents. And at some point, one of my older brothers was smart enough to say, oh, well, I guess we're orphans now. What a weird thought. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. But what's the big deal? What difference does it make? Well, think about that child. The small child, not the 70-year-old child. The small child. Encountering a thunderstorm. Having parents around doesn't make the thunder and lightning go away. Still there, still booming, still crashing, still scary. Having parents doesn't make the child any more powerful or any less fearful. In, re in reality, the child is no less helpless having a parent than not. But what changes, the one crucial factor that's different is the child is not alone. And from that reality flows a host of grand and glorious eventualities. The presence of a parent means that even in the midst of fear and powerlessness and helplessness and even hopelessness, that child knows beyond question that they are not alone. The child may not be able to make the lightning stop flashing and the thunder to stop crashing. They magically don't have the power and the agency to affect that kind of change, but they are not in it alone. A hand holds theirs and says, it's okay. I'll be with you. All the scary stuff is still there. But the child is not alone. I will not leave you orphaned. It's one of the most powerful and most often overlooked parts of Scripture. I will not leave you orphaned. You will not be alone. No matter what storms come your way. No matter what life throws at you, no matter how dire things get, you are not alone. You are accompanied. You are cared for. You are loved. 
I will not leave you orphan. Whether seen or unseen, acknowledged or unknown, God is present to surround and support. We do not travel through this journey alone. We don't walk alone. We don't live alone. We don't worship alone. We don't commune alone. We are not left as orphans. We are placed into community. Within the community of the Trinity, within the community of the body of Christ, we find companionship. God's promised and delivered presence. Doesn't mean that the difficulties magically disappear, right? The thunder still crashes. The lightning still flashes. But it does mean that we're not alone. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. When I was a kid, the big phrase in South Carolina is, have you found Jesus? At first, I thought they were talking about cheeses. But that was in Wisconsin. The phrase in South Carolina was, have you found Jesus? Like, we're supposed to go out and look for him like God's put him somewhere and can't remember where. The New Testament declaration is exactly the opposite. I am coming to you. I will find you. I will accompany you. I will not leave you orphaned. No matter the storm, no matter the darkness, the dawn is coming. Ultimately, ultimately, because Christ lives, we shall live also. And nothing, no storm, separates us from the love of God present in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering. Equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed. Speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O God. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, to all who are sick or grieving, especially Betty A., Don B., Joe B., Ruby C., Dwayne D., Bill H., Lowell K., Paul K., Margaret M, Vicki S, Grace T, Annette W, John and Ruth W. Hear us, O God. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers. Children estranged from mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child, support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. We pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those cares, concerns, and celebrations which you carry in your lives this day. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine 
that your spirit of power and protection would cover them. We pray for the people of Afghanistan as they seek to rebuild their lives. Be with those who bring aid into that region. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen and living Lord. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth and the breaking of this bread revealed to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right a duty and a joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. For the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and love. are you God of the universe your mercy is everlasting your faithfulness endures from age to age praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out upon all nations. In the night in which you was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. And as community gather here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and then send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, with Matthias and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, Blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. 
We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. You may be seated. spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. As you come to this altar, we will commune this day by intinction. There is wine in the larger section and grape juice in the smaller. Come forward at the direction of the ushers.
Please stand. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. God, of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. You may be seated. We, uh, we have him confused, which is really not that hard to do. It's but, really not. Uh, it's really not that hard. Anyway, it's interesting that you chose today to talk about history. Mm. And um, you may have figured out that we're doing something historical today. Uh, we are. I was planning yeah. on talking about that next week. But I know, but right that, look, we, we stole your thumb. I right, understand. So. Um, we have with us, you may have noticed that during the I did service, notice. I did. we had a pastor doing one lesson, we had a yes. pastor doing another lesson, yeah. we had a pastor coming and helping yeah. you I with did notice. Uh, all this sort of thing, and it's not accidental. Uh, for those of you who may not have gotten the word, uh, we are coming close to the 35th anniversary of this young man's ordination, which is coming yeah. up. Let us. Uh, Thank you. Now, Joe, you've been ordained for 53 years, did you say? Ooh. And you've been ordained? 53. 53? Okay, so we got 106 right Six, there. Yeah. Okay, and I've been ordained for 43, oh. so that's 146 that we're at, years worth. And we add your 35 on, I'm not going to try the math. That's, <laughs> that's probably going a little beyond. But you're a piker still compared oh, yeah. especially oh, to those yeah. two yeah. over there. Um, but we did want to recognize the day, and we thought that perhaps those of us who have been through it could appreciate even more what it means to have been in ministry for 35 yeah. years. And um, in order to properly celebrate, when we leave here, we're going to go down the hall and where that, that special event is supposed to go on for all the ladies. Well, we're also going to have a cake well, and some other goodies for you. you. And, and you talk and about... And they're fabulous store prizes. Yes, you talk about... <laughs> the, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, well, first of all, speaking of fabulous door prizes, um, the, uh, the Synod uh, presents each time uh, when you hit significant anniversaries a, um, a certificate to mark that day. And um, I contacted them and asked them if they could send it here so that we could present it to you. But um, we were going to do this next week. But then somebody scheduled fire drills and uh, other stuff like that for next week, and it goofed that's up the true, plan. That's true. So you might notice a problem here. It says James. James Remps in recognition of the name. 35th anniversary of ordination. So you get this to hold well, until yours you. comes through. Now, wait. In the military tradition, if someone was moving forward in rank, if the captain was about to give uh, a new uh, person the rank of lieutenant, he might take his old lieutenant's bars and give them to that person as a special honor so that they could wear his bar. So you get my bars. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, okay. For, for Probably it'll arrive on Monday. You All know, the, right. the check well, is in the mail. Well, but, I appreciate anyway. that. But thank you very even much. more so, 
we have somebody else here. We need you to come over just for a second. And Aww. 35 years in ministry for him <laughs> means 35 years in ministry uh, for her, and especially ministry to yes. him. She, she's, she's had a much tougher go than I have. It's been <laughs> yeah, I, I still remember when we, when you, I go back so far that when I finished seminary, they still presented the PhD degree to uh, the ladies who were spouses of the guys who were, that's putting hubby through uh, <laughs> degree, but they don't dare, dare do that anymore because there's more women than men at the seminary, I think, that's at correct. this point. That's um, we're going to give this young man a chance for a couple words. Uh, two and a half years ago, we were uh, very fortunate to have uh, Pastor and Amy accept the call, and it's uh, been uh, a blessing to, uh, to our church. Uh, he's a man of community, which he talks about a great deal. Uh, he's been involved as soon as he got here with uh, the joining organizations. He's the police chaplain. He, he's just done a great job, and one of the things that I think that, uh, at least for me, when he does his sermon, I look forward to the next week of what is it going to be, <laughs> you know, how, <laughs> how great he delivers these sermons and, and the message, the powerful message that he gives every week. So we're very blessed. Thank you for accepting Thank the you. call and being here, and we look for many more years to come. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to pass the mic on because she is going to get to talk down when we get down to ah. the other room. And you notice we even have some people from Hendersonville. I, I well, noticed that. We have gathered stories oh, from places sure you where have. you've been before, and she's going to share some of those. So oh. if you weren't planning to come for cake, you got to come now because you're going to get some really good <laughs> stuff. I'm, I'm heading told. for the parking lot. So, Thank you very much. Uh, this was very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, b I believe that Denise did want to indicate that when we go back down there, when you're going into the room, those of you who are staying for the uh, meal for the brunch, uh, the Mother's Day brunch, if you go to the left when you get in the door and sit on that side, if you're coming just for the cake, go to the right. It's sort of like sheep and goats, you know, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, that's what I was told we're doing All when right, we get down well. there. So I, I, I announce it. Finally, the service is not quite ended. We, we brought his book up so that he would, would be able to finish. We're going to sing. This is something that won't happen again as long as he's around. We're going to just sing one verse oh. of the closing hymn, okay? Oh. We're going to do one verse to give the choir a chance to get out, and, uh, and then we will finish up as, us as we usually do on a Sunday morning from the rear. So uh, th uh, thank you all. J yes, the first verse. Man, who made, who made that decision? One verse. Oh. Oh. of Christ Lutheran Church, how will others experience us? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace 
empowered by the Holy Spirit and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace. Serve the risen one.